Simpson's rule is another way we can approximate integrals. And actually, Simpson's rules, believe it or not, uses parabolas um, instead of uh, straight lines. We're going to use a parabola. Uh, we don't have to. We don't have to calculate the parabolas, but just be aware it's using parabolas. And <clears throat> let me just show you here how, how it sets up. You don't necessarily have to do all this uh, every time. But <clears throat> here's here's the way here's the way it works. All right. So say we got this y equals f of x curve. And we're going to approximate, we're going to use six subintervals from A to B. So there's three, so it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Equal, close to B. All right. <clears throat> well, it turns out, like I said, you don't have to worry about all this, but here's, here's how it, it all plays out. <clears throat> um, we kind of group them in sort of threes, one, two, three, so, uh, well, endpoints, uh, because it's two subintervals. So this is x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, this, of course, this is x6, and this is x0. <coughs> but here's, here's the way it goes out. So we've got this and this. Um, that's Sort of that piece of the curve, it's sort of parabolic, but um, it, it turns out you need three points to determine a parabola. And, uh, and so that's why we kind of group them this way, because then this third point kind of gives us that third value uh, to go make a parabola. Well, <clears throat> turns out the it's, that's not going to be quite a parabola, but with those three points, we can establish a parabola. And let's just say the parabola is like this. I mean, it's whatever it is. I mean, the book has better, <coughs> better graphics, but that's, that's the idea. So those three establish a parabola, and then you do the same thing with these three points for the next two subintervals. That sets up three points. We can make a parabola off of that. And then these three last three here, those three can make another one. All right, so <clears throat> let's call this one number one. And so the area under the curve one, uh, using that parabolic shape, here's what, uh, here's what it turns out to be. It's, <clears throat> there's a little bit of work involved, and I'm not going to go all the way through it. The book does. So if you want to Look, it's kind of interesting the way it works because actually what they do is they say, well, that's a parabola, so now I can integrate that, and the integral turns out to be this, and then that's equal to, turns out here's what it is. All right, so we've got those three points, which the heights of those three points, if you will, is what we're going to use here. It turns out that that area, talking about that parabolic area, is this. It's delta x over 3 times f of x0, so it's the function value at x0, plus 4 f of x1s. <clears throat> like I said, if you're interested in why is it 4, you can see the calculation they have in the book there. And then it's uh, f of x2. Okay. C book, if you're interested in how, how, that, how that works. <clears throat> All right. Well, it turns out A2 and A3, we call them A2 and A3, are very similar. So if we find those areas, it's delta x over 3 times f of x2 plus 4, uh, the middle one, f of x3, and then f of x4. And then A3 is delta x over 3. And again, if you're interested in why is it delta x over 3, see, uh, see that in the book. Well, it would be 1 f of x4, or A3, plus 4 f of x5. 
and then a half of egg six. So those are the three areas. If we do parabolas, I mean, they, they kind of do look like parabolas, but we, if we make a parabola out of those three and then do the area under between those limits. Well, <clears throat> all right, so what does this mean? Well, the integral then from a to b of f of x dx is approximately those three areas added together. And so if we add those three areas together, of course, again, they all have delta x over 3, so we can factor that off. Bring it up front. All right, so what are we going to have? We're going to have an f of x 0 plus 4 f of x 1s. How many f of x 2s? Well, just two of those. 2f of x2s, 4f of x3s, 2f of x4s, <clears throat> uh, 4f of x5s, and then an f of x6. Okay. Well, <clears throat> so that's interesting. Trapezoidal rule, we had two of each one of these in the middle. But in the Simpsons rule, you got 4, 2, 4, 2, 4. It, it alternates between 4, 2, 4, 2. So just another different way of calculating, approximating an integral. Um, so we got delta x over 3, uh, dividing by 3. It's sometimes referred to as uh, Simpson, Simpsons one-third rule as well. Um, <clears throat> To help you remember, it's divided by three instead of uh, two, as in the trapezoidal rule. Um, so here, here it is in general. <clears throat> so you can see that's for n equals six. The one thing about the Simpsons rule, you have to have an even number of um, subintervals for this to work out. Because um, you got to do do them three at a time, if you will, but. Anyway, it turns out it just has to be even. You don't have to have a multiple of three. It's got to be an even number. So here it is in general. <clears throat> Simpsons rule or Simpsons one third rule. Sometimes it's referred to as. divided by 3, or 1 third delta x, times f of x sub 0 plus uh, 4, sorry, yeah, 4 f of x 1. The odd subintervals are the ones that have 4. Plus 2 f of x 2, and then the middle even ones are 2's. 4 f of x 3 plus 2 f of x4, continue that pattern. Odd ones are 4, even ones are 2, except on the ends. Then you go all the way out of f of x of n. Okay. <coughs> Simpsons one third rule. So it's just another lovely uh, rule to remember there. Have have somewhere to refer to. Okay? Let's do one. <clears throat> Use Simpson's rule to approximate. Use Simpson's rule of n equals a, let's call it.
to approximate. The integral from one to four. Jay, oh, when you uh, get a chance, could you go to two eleven? They need a full view. Cosine x over x squared. Dx. All right, so we're going to approximate. That's the same one we have all the other. Here we're going to use n equals eight, though. <clears throat> all right, so my delta x. Figure that out. So we got n equals eight. Um, B minus A over N is, well, it's going to be 3 eighths. And let's call that 0.375. So, uh, X0 is running on the X of I's. X0 is just A, so it's 1. X1 then add uh, delta X to that, 1.375. X2 is add 0.375 to that, it's 1.75. X3 uh, is 0.375 plus that, so it's 2.125. X4, add 375 to that, so that's 2.5. So forth and so on. 375 to that, <coughs> 2.875. X6, 0.375 to that, we got 3.25. X7, 3.625. And then X8 is 4. Okay? So, by Simpson's rule, <coughs> the integral from 1 to 4, cosine of X over X squared, with n equals eight is approximately equal to. I'm going to run myself out of the room again. This one's a long one. Matter of fact, let's just do it down here. So the integral one to four cosine of x over x squared is approximately equal to delta x over three. So it's zero point three seven five. Divided by three, we get it's divided by three. It's going to be a little bit. Times f of x zero, so it'll be f of one plus four times f of x one, so f of one point three seven five plus two f of x two, so that'd be two f of one point seven five plus four f of x three or f of two point one two five plus 2 f of x4, so f of 2.5, 4 f of 5, so or 2.875, 2 f of 3.25, 4 f of 7, so f of 3.625, and then f of x8, just one of those. Okay. So yeah, it's just a little matter of uh, putting all that in. And again, like I said, if you use that bar stuff, um, pretty, pretty well works. Uh, plug it in. I get all that to be approximately, just to check yourself, negative 0.106561. I think they want it to five, six decimal places. All that out. <clears throat> Let's see, I think that's just three eighths of point. Three seven five five by three times. All right, so it's Y one one four Y one one point three seven five 
plus 2f of 1.75. plus 4 f of 2.125 plus 2 f of 2.5 plus 4 f of 2.875 Plus four three point two sixty five and last but not least F four. And if we got it all entered right. Okay. So I see it wrong. Negative one point six five six one. Yeah, zero six three two one. All right. <clears throat> you get it? Yeah, it's just uh, kind of a tedious, tedious thing. <clears throat> but let's uh, let's try one more, and like I said, they will they will have you do Simpson's rule, trapezoidal rule, but they also throw in a midpoint rule. So let me do one where I can do all three of those. <clears throat> Okay, so let's <clears throat> approximate. <clears throat> the interval two to six, one over x dx. Point rule B trapezoidal rule and C Simpson's rule. And we'll compare and contrast those three. See how see how good those three did. <clears throat> Alright, so with all three you need delta X. In this case it B minus A over N. 6 minus 2 over 4, so that'd be, oh, that'd be nice. Delta X is 1. Uh, let's go ahead and do the X of zeros and X of 1s and that sort of thing. X of 0 is just A where we start. That'd be 2. X1, X1 would be uh, that plus delta X would be 3. X2 would be 4. X3 would be 5. X4 would be 6. So those are endpoints of our sub sub intervals. Now, the one thing, so that that's what that's really all you need for trapezoidal and Simpson's rule. Uh, for midpoint rule, however, remember, uh, recall, you also need the midpoints. <clears throat> and so let me go ahead and do that. X of one bar is just the midpoint between the first two, so between two and three, that's 2.5, that'd be the midpoint there. X of two bar Midpoint between three and four is so be three point five. So three bar between four and five would be four point five. And then x of four bar, midpoint between five and six will be five point five. Just have to get those midpoints as well. Alright, so A or midpoint rule, here's what we got. <clears throat> Our integral two to six. 1 over x dx is approximately equal to, now the midpoint rule, we just have, uh, usually what we did is we, we did the delta x, factor it off, 
just like we did with the others. Uh, the others have delta x divided by 2 and delta x divided by 3, but for the midpoint rule, it's just delta x times f of all the midpoints, f of x1 bar, f of x2 bar, f of x3 bar. It's back to the uh, just adding up the function values on the midpoint rule. You don't have any multiples of those, or you're not dividing delta x. You're just this delta x times all of those uh, summed together. And so that that works out to be <clears throat> well, delta x is one, so it'd be f of uh, two point five plus f of three point five plus f of four point five and f of five point five. That's all you have to do for that. And that turns out to be if you do all the calculations there. Uh, 1.08975 is what I get. <coughs> Which those are, those would be too hard to do by hand, right? That'd be 1, f of x is 1, uh, one over x, so that'd be 1 over, says the integral from 2 to 6, 1 over x dx is approximately equal to uh, trapezoidal rule, we do delta x over 2, so that would be 1 over 2 times f of x 0, so be f of 2, <coughs> plus 2 times f of x 1, which is 3, plus 2, in trapezoidal rule you do 2 times all the middle ones, uh, 2 times f of uh, x 2, so f of 4, uh, 2 times f of x, 3, so like 2 times f of 5, and then just f of the last one, f of 6. And again, those are easy to compute. 1 half times f of 2 would be 1 half. f of 3 would be uh, 1 third, so it would be 2 times 1 third, 2 thirds. 2 times f of 4, 2 times 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 1 half. Uh, 2 times 1 fifth, 2 fifths, plus 1 over 6. 1.16 repeat. one over x dx is approximately, so on Simpson's rule we do delta x divided by 3, so that would be 1 divided by 3, delta x is 1. All right, and then we do f of x 0, so f of 2, plus 4, f of x 1, remember the odd ones are times 4, so it will be 4 times f of x 1, plus 2 times f of x 2, which is f of 4, and then 4 times f of x 3, Five, and then f of six. So it's about the same, except you got the fours instead of the twos on some of those. So what do we got there? One third times f of two is one half. Four times f of three, so it'd be four thirds. Uh, two times f of four, so it'd be two fourths again, or one half. 4 times, so it would be 4 times 1 fifth, 4 fifths, and 1 sixth, that's not least, 1.1. <clears throat> so the integral here approximately is 1.1. And so yeah, I did this one for just another example, but also uh, we can actually do that integral, we don't really have to approximate it, but just for comparison here, I did this one. Uh, we know that that integral, that's just a natural log, isn't it? 
Natural log of absolute value of x from 2 to 6. So you've got uh, <clears throat> be the natural log of 6 minus the natural log of 2. And that turns out to be 1.09861, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I believe so. Just to check. <clears throat> yeah, 2289. I don't want to go further with that, but uh, continues, uh, well, let's do it this way. I don't know what that's, what if that is, but. Okay, so we compare this one to those three. How do we do? We just did four sub intervals. 1.0986. They all do a pretty good job. Uh, 116098. Oh, that one's 089. Uh, this one's actually, actually, really the closest. It's uh, 0 0.014, 0 0014. That's just 0, 0, 0014 off. So they all do a pretty good job, even with a small, small number of uh, sub intervals. Get more, get better. 